and welcome to the second part of the series of videos on geomapping. Uh, we're going to have a little bit uh, more of a dig into ArcGIS Explorer and the way you can display data and the way you can use measurements. And then we'll start looking at how you can add layers containing uh, important information to maps. Um, 3D, it's so fashionable. Um, not, not, not perhaps the most useful tool, but it's an interesting facility that's available and may, in some circumstances, help you produce more interesting presentations. Obviously, a lot of the data we use here is quite dry, so it can produce a nice, interesting presentation. That's obviously quite useful. Okay, first of all, we're going to have a look at ArcGIS's three-dimensional view. Um, so far, we've only been looking at two-dimensional views. You can orient it so that it produces a three-dimensional image. Obviously, this only looks impressive if you've got a reasonable change in elevation. Um, it's worth having a look at. But the first thing we're going to do is actually save our map. Uh, at the moment, we've got it. Uh, we've got our default map loaded. When you start up, your default map no normally loads up. So I want to save this as something new. So what I'm going to do here won't change my default map. One we start up with every time. I'm going to go to save. Okay, oops, I beg your pardon. I'm going to go to save as, and I'm going to save it as an ArcGIS Explorer map, and I'm going to call it 3D. Okay, so I've saved that now, so this should now change uh, up here to 3D. Right, okay, change it to the 3D view. If you click on that button there, it toggles between the two. So we click on 3D display. Now the system has a little talk to itself, as you can imagine, because it takes a little while to render the data into 3D. So we'll just pause. Okay, um, there it goes, it's uh, catching up with itself. Right, if you look at the little control row set down here, we'll see there's a new item appeared. Uh, this allows you to change the uh, change the tilt of the map. Okay, so we can sort of have a negative tilt as well, which doesn't make much sense. That button resets it. Okay, so that's quite important. Uh, right, so we're going to find uh, Rosemary Topping. Uh, the system already knows I've looked at Rosemary Topping in the past. So it's now going to look for it again. And it will center the map on Rosby Topping. Okay, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Uh, so we've got something to uh, rotate ourselves around. Right, so again, I'm going to tilt the map. Uh, use a little control there to give you a little bit more fine control. Uh, so it, looks, it looks quite nice. Um, it's rotating. Uh, make your pardon, it's tilting away from me. Okay, that's quite nice. Now the other thing we can do is rotate the map using these controls here. Uh, so if we start off in this direction, we're looking towards uh, the rest of the movers. And we continue around in that direction. And you can see some of the background features are a bit blurry because it takes a little while again to render them when you're doing this. And continuing around. Um, so where are we? Yes, okay, there's Great Ayrton there. There's Stokesley in the background. Continue to rotate around. It's Newton and Rosebury. And in the distance there is Teesside, of course. Uh, so if we want to, we've altered the orientation of the map and changed north effectively there. So if we go by the rosette and click on N, it will take us back to the original orientation, so north is in that direction. Um, okay, that was the three-dimensional view. Okay, the uh, next thing we're going to look at is how to use ArcGIS Explorer to make measurements. We can measure things in linear distance, we can measure area, and we can also specify points on a map by longitude and latitude if we don't already know them. Uh, all of which can be very useful. Right, so how do we um, do measurement using ArcGIS Explorer? Uh, first thing I'm going to do again is do a save as. Uh, so I'm going to save a, a new map, which I'm going to call Measure. about spell measure okay again we're starting off in big maps aerial and if we zoom in we should find the university fairly quickly uh, right so the first thing we need to do is open up the measure tools dialog so we click there um, this little dialog here will appear now there's a number of things we can do with this I'm just zooming in a little bit further uh, this one here allows you to fix a coordinate and get its long longitude and latitude essentially that's quite useful um, this one here allows you to measure an area, and this one here allows you to measure a linear distance. 
what we're going to do is find King Edward Square, which is over here, and set the position of the geographical center of the main bit, where, where, the, where the bench is, I would, I would guess. We click there, and we'll see immediately that information has appeared in this little box. Now we can add that to the map. Uh, if we've added that to the map, so now when we save the map, that will be preserved. If we hadn't added it to the map, it would have been lost. Uh, okay, so that's quite straightforward and can be quite useful if you have a feature such as a food outlet, for example, which you know where it is, but you don't actually have a geotagged image, for example. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is measure a linear distance. Right, so make the map a bit bigger. What we're going to do is measure the length of Borough Road, which is from here, uh, where it meets Union Street, down to... Oh, we need to be a bit further out, yeah. Okay, we need to be a little bit further out there. Okay. Uh, so from Union Street down to where it meets Martin Road. So we click on that tool and click once here. A, as we drag the mouse you'll see a line has become attached to it. So we pull that all the way down to Martin Road. And if we click once again, what you'll see what will happen is the line will continue, which is obviously quite useful if you want to measure it as a zigzaggy path. At the moment we're just measuring a simple linear one, so we'll double click on there. If you look in here, it's given the length is just under a kilometre, and you can have that in in uh, miles if you wish, uh, 0.62 of a mile, 6.2 of a mile, we'll take it back to kilometres and again we will add to the map. Right, okay, so the third thing is measuring an area. Right, so I've zoomed in there to King Edward Square and I'm going to measure the extent of King Edward Square using the area tool. So again we start by clicking and a line gets attached to our, our mouse cursor. Pull down here and click once again. Right. We're gonna. It's 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 not a rec rectangle, obviously, because there's a car park and other bits. So we click again there. I'm probably not being particularly accurate there. Uh, click again there. There down to there. We won't include a turning circle. Go across to the where the uh, crime scene house is, and then back up here and again double click. So it's now giving us the area in square meters. Uh, again, you can have it in uh, acres. Nobody knows what acres are anymore. Our square kilometers which doesn't look like a lot so we'll turn you back to square meters and add to map uh, okay so that's the basics of doing measurements uh, as I meant, we'll actually have another look at the linear one as I say we can we can measure linear distances on a little zigzaggy path so one of the problems is that once you reach the edge of the map with the measurement uh, you sort of stop so you've got to zoom the map out quite away um, so we'll uh, so what will we do? We'll, we'll have a little walk around the block, which I occasionally do. We'll walk all the way around the block, uh, measured in a linear sense. So we click on the roller again. Uh, we start from outside the middle of the tower. Go down to here. Down to here. Down to here to take us to Southfield Road. Down to here to take us to Woodlands Road. Down here on the Borough Road. Uh, along Borough Road, back in the way it intercepts Alb Albert Road then back to where we started from so I double click again so again it's given the length of my regular walk around the block to stretch my legs and my eyes uh, just under a 0.9 of a kilometer okay so there we are Adina can help Adina really can it's a large database of a lot of information much of it geographical maintained by the University of Edinburgh uh, extremely useful so we're going to allow it to do us to do a number of things we're going to download a number of layers. Um, there's Middlesbrough. We're going to add su su successfully a layer defining the outline of the town. Another layer which has the uh, middle super output areas. And a third layer which has the lower super output areas. Um, these are all stored in databases so you don't have to draw them in by hand. We can get the information and upload it directly into your map. This is the uh, Adina main page which contains a, a wealth of information. There's Digimap there which includes on the survey maps. Um, some of them going back to 1843 which is something I'll need to investigate at some point. Uh, we'll scroll down a bit further until we find the UK borders information. Now this is literally what it says. It's information about borders within the United Kingdom. Uh, so it includes census boundaries, admin boundaries and electoral boundaries. Uh, as I'm sure you remember Things like low super output areas and uh, middle super output areas are based on the 2001 census boundaries. Uh, so that's where we can download the information. Uh, so if we click on UK borders, 
it'll bring us into a login via the UK Federation that's um, so I'm going to click on that um, it knows I've been here before so it's remembered I'm logging in via Teesside University um, should you be listening to this from another university or check with your library staff about how to do this if you're listening you're not part of a university I recommend you ask your local library or your university library but for now I'm going to log in we click on that we get the usual shibboleth login dialog okay so this is taking us to the page for uh, UK borders in Adena and again there's lots of information in here there's a thematic mapper there which allows you to theoretically dynamically create maps online but I haven't got it to work yet uh, but hopefully I will and when I do I'll get back to you what we're interested in here is downloading some boundary data now this easy download one uh, which is it's fairly straightforward to use but will download very big data sets probably of the whole country uh, boundary data selector allows us to in this case download information just for the town of Middlesbrough and you can download even smaller information down, down to you know a low super output area so we're going to click on that which is going to open up this little dialog box now some bits and pieces up here which we'll have a look at in a moment but for now we need to start searching for the information and there's a lot of it and it can be a little bit confusing I'll, I'll admit the first thing we're going to look for here I found by quite a little bit of trial and error so we're going to turn the country to England and we're going to turn the dates to post 1999 which will include the 2001 census data and drop down here for geography we want to set that up for administrative boundaries nothing's happened so far till we press that button there and it looks in this database and finds a list of administrative boundaries starting with police units uh, right so we want to scroll down here to unitary uh, English Unity Authorities 2001 uh, because by, as I said by trial and error in this case I found out that's where the information we want lives so I'm going to click on list areas and it comes up with a list of unitary areas uh, unitary authorities rather which will include Middlesbrough of course right so that's the information we want if you're not sure uh, for some reason if you click on map view it'll after a few moments talking to the database will say look here's a map of Middlesbrough is that what you're interested in uh, under format allows us to save under a number of different mapping information formats including things like comma separated value which would allow information to be uploaded to Excel which can be quite useful and we'll come back to that later but for now we're going to stick to Esri shapefile format right so we've just going to check that we've still got Middlesbrough highlighters uh, there we go and I'm going to click on extract boundary data um, as ever it takes a little while to do if you've got a really big data set it may take quite a while to do this one's quite small ok it always comes up with this screen, it'll give you the size of the download which is not particularly big, it always comes as a zip file which we're going to have to unzip into a folder and all the files are downloaded are, are, are called boundary data zip so be careful you don't overwrite information you've already downloaded so I'll click on that and I'm going to go to save as because I'm going to save it on my desktop as town and it's saying it exists uh, do you want to replace it? yes I do because it's obviously an old version I've got there uh, right, close that up minimize that ok here's a zip file for town which we open up we'll find a a number of files in it. Now I've already created a folder for this to be extracted into which I'll now open and then simply copy the information from the zip file into the folder. You need to do this step because it can't read directly from the zip file. Right, the same amount of information in here. Um, we'll come back to those in a minute. So the readme information which gives you information what you downloaded. Uh, in terms and conditions, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, record of your uh, request in sort of HTML format which isn't particularly readable and the terms and conditions are gigantonormous um, gosh there's a lot of them obviously the main thing here is when you use this data you need a references right so we're going to close that folder and we're going to open up ArcGIS ok there's ArcGIS with our, our traditional view uh, ok so we're going to go to add contents and we're going to add a shape file right let's go back to uh, my desktop because it's wandered off for some reason and find town extracted 
Now remember there's a lot of different files in there now it's, it's resolved them into one that's the one which opens up the whole set of information so we double click on that and it's added shape file which is the boundaries of Middlesbrough it's a sort of bilious yellow colour but we can change that if we uh, double click on it it gets an information, some information saying it's military unit authority then some labels which relate to how the census data is stored we'll probably have a look at this a little bit later right so as I say it's a, this bilious yellow colour which you might want to get rid of it's appeared in here as that we can give that another name so I'm going to call that town uh, and then if we right click on this we can go to what's called symbol uh, there's a number of different things we can do here. For now, I think I'm just going to give it a red outline. Okay, so the yellow colour's gone, it's been replaced by a red outline. Right, now as usual, I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save it as Middlesbrough. Okay, that's step number one complete. I'm going to now minimise that and open up um, the database thing again. Right, and go back to where we were before. So go back to where, uh, and in this case, we're still in the same area. But what we want is what we want this time is census boundaries. So double click on that, click on find, and it comes up with the uh, the usual list. So what we're going to look for at the moment this time is middle middle super output areas. Uh, so it's got layer layer there, and we want this one I believe is unitary authorities so English super output areas middle layer 2001 with unitary authorities list area and it's found Middlesbrough there now we can expand that to get all of the information for all of the lower super output areas in it but we don't want that at the moment so we'll go back to the previous list uh, let's check it's still there okay that's the one we're interested in so we'll download that data now remember this is the middle super output area, so that's what we're going to call it. Doing the data extraction thing again. Okay, now again, it's, you notice the file is quite a bit bigger, it's about four times the size because there's a lot more information in this. Uh, again, it's called the boundary data, which we don't want, so we're going to save as middle super output area uh, to the desktop again. So I'll save that. Didn't take very long. So again, we find our our, our folder which is here. Uh, open it up. You'll see very similar information to what we saw before. Let's drag that over there. Not the way. So we can see what's happening. And then open up Middlesbrough Soup and uh, Middle Super Output Area Extracted. And as usual, dump the files into there. Okay. Close them up. Reinitiate. Reopen ArcGIS Explorer. And again, go to Add Content. Add Shared Content. The shape file again. Uh, go to desktop and find middle super, middle super output area ex extracted and just open it up right now well, what's happened here is that we need to now change this again so we're going to call that middle super output area and then change the boundaries to something which we can differentiate so I'm going to give it a green outline uh, not particularly visible that green one so we'll We'll, we'll, we'll add a little sort of fill to it as well if we can um, but perhaps have a different colour boundary yeah that's better we'll have a, a green one with a black boundary okay that's uh, stage two completed the red line is the town the green areas bounded by sort of blue, bluey black lines are the middle super output area so again we'll save that and then we'll go for the third time back into the Adena uh, borders data right, so going back to where we were before uh, come back to where so in this case we're in the same table this time we want the unitary authorities uh, so we want English super output areas lower layer 2001 with unitary authorities list areas uh, again scroll down until we find the borough select it and then we'll go straight to extract boundary information uh, here's our, our link again files getting bigger all of the time uh, it's still called boundary data so when we click on that We'll do save as and save as lower super output area. Uh, so that concludes our use of Adena for now. So I'm going to close that up and get rid of it. Uh, there's our zip file with the information in. Open up the folder for that and transfer the things over. Close them both up. Open it back again. Go to add content for the third time 
and add a shape file go back to the desktop uh, for lower super output areas and double click again right so again we're going to change the name by clicking there and allow us to change it lower super output areas which it uh, so we can distinguish what's going on here and then we'll find by right clicking on it a symbol which allows us to see what's happening uh, so what will we try well we'll try that one oh that's quite good yeah okay so we got the three layers here um, you notice they're all ticked at the moment so we can see them all on the screen right now I'm gonna I'm gonna take those two off for the moment and take us back to the town uh, remember when we click there we got that sort of information okay I'm gonna remove the town one and open up middle super output areas and if you click on any one again you'll get a bit more detailed information it's telling you for example that's Hemlington and Stain and it's got these things called Pop North and Geo North which I'm going to explain in an another video uh, they're associated with something called centroids and these numbers seem a bit strange you w may be wondering why they aren't longitude and latitude that's because of the way uh, data is stored um, a lot of the data is stored using these what are called Eastings and Northings which we subsequently need to convert into longitudes and latitudes more on that in a, a future video and finally looking at the lower super output area uh, pick, uh, pick one from here for example uh, so it's telling us that uh, it's got the designation Middlesbrough 18A okay so bring all of them up there so we can see the whole thing and then we're going to go to save to save and that completes uh, our our production of three layers uh, using the census information boundaries for Middlesbrough and so that's the end of part two uh, thanks for listening I'll see you for the next in this series